YouTube Dawson Ryder here with my review of the second wave of the main Ben 10 figures. So this actually I feel like took a while to come out and then I was really surprised when I found them. I think I'm kind of uh, late on getting the reviews out because I, I kept checking Toys R Us since that was the initial place uh, everything was spotted at but other places started carrying them and so I ended up finding these at Walmart. So I apologize if I'm late. But regardless, it did take a minute for these to come out, I felt. I felt it would have been closer. Um, especially since, like, a lot of the advertisements had these figures in them very early on, way before they were out. But anyway, I feel like this wave is a little bit more exciting in a way than the first one because it has kind of more newish stuff. Because we have Water Hazard, who's a straight-up new alien, although he's basically... I just called him Water Hazard. I meant to say Overflow. I was going to say he's basically Water Hazard, but this is Overflow, so... But Stinkfly's a new design, Wild Vine's a little bit more changed, Upgrade's a little bit more changed, and then we have Dr. Animo, who I think we maybe only got one figure of before in the past. I feel like we got at least one in one of the old series waves. But anyway, speaking of him, let's let's just go ahead and start with him. And he's a pretty a pretty decent looking figure. I think they they captured it, the look of him in animation pretty well, but he's probably the most boring one in the wave for me even though I think they did a pretty good job on the details. There's just not a lot going for him like he has this backpack here on him and he, and he comes with this little fun guy right here. I think it was from one of like the farming episodes or something. I don't know. I'm not my memory's not too good about the new series because I, I don't rewatch it as much, if at all. But they come with this little guy. But he comes with like this backpack, and then like his hands are open as if he's gonna have something to hold, like some sort of like gun or hose, hose or something to come off of this. But there's really nothing. Uh, it, it just comes off as awkward when he has these the classic sort of figure getting ready to hold a weapon or something hand, and then he has nothing to do with it. So it's kind of weird. On um, the articulation wise, he has this little hinge here. He can't bend his elbows, which is kind of a annoying for making poses look a little more natural, especially since most other figures, including some aliens with more awkward large designs, have that. He can lube, lube. He can lube his legs back and forth, move his legs back and forth, and he's got knee bending. Um, there is uh, a little bit waist articulation, but it's kind of hard to move around. And you can move his head all the way around, and then you can move it up and down too, which is nice because it, it adds a little bit extra personality to figures. Um, and then we got Wild Vine here, who comes with these two little vine accessories, which I have on him. This one just kind of cups on his arm like this. You can take it on and off. Uh, you can put it on either arm. And then this one plugs in back here, which is, is kind of odd to plug in because this back, like, vine, or, like, fruit system back here is like a butt, basically. And, like, the way that the, the, this is actually, actually really awkward, the way they put the hole in there when you think about it. Let's, yeah, but, like... Yeah, that is really awkward. Like, but I mean, the way that the it's molded because these like push out, it's hard to actually get it in there. That is really dirty, and I honestly didn't even think about that when I was getting ready for the review. I was just thinking about how that was a poor design choice, but I didn't even think about it until we got in here. Um, but he's actually probably one of my more favorites of the line. I think the look of him between the paint and the details and the sculpting really captures the animated look of him. Like he looks like he jumped right out of the cartoon, especially with his facial expression and stuff. And I appreciate the little vines to sort of give him. Um, you know, a, a feel of his powers, and he's pretty well articulated. He's got a, a pretty good range of things he can do, which is which is nice. And he can and move his head a little bit as well. It's 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 slight. I mean, he can move it all around, but I mean, the up and down is slight. But it's very appreciated because you know it lets you just give that figure that much more personality, which is a, is a nice thing. Okay, now we got the big guy here. I think I knew. I was like, I knew you're resting on it as soon as I was gonna grab him. Come on, Wild Vine, just stay up. And he's changed because, I mean, he's a little bit tweaked from the top up, but the main thing is is that he used to just have vines as legs. I guess they wanted everyone to be a bit more humanoid. Um, so here is Overflow, who I'm going to call Water Hazard a million times. And I actually don't mind his design, and I like the voice they have for him in the show, but it's just, it's just so Water Hazard. I'm surprised they didn't just decide to call him Water Hazard because... It's just so close to it. It almost just looks like a, a radical omniverse redesigned version. But it's a pretty nice figure. It's pretty large. It feels a little bit hollow, but still is nice looking. It has the good, uh, the good paint. I almost said like it has good paint details and and like it's uh, the red they use and stuff matches the show. I mean, by nature of his design, you can't really move his head or anything, but you can move him uh, like his waist, so you can get a little bit poses like that, which is kind of nice. Um, and then you have like clear plastic here, which works, and here, which and there's like little. Uh, if you can see it like it looks like little bubble details which is a, a nice detail and these little water sprayers actually do come out so you can choose to have them displayed or not but it, it's pretty nice um, you can, oh, I'll, I'll choose to have that one out that was my choice but you can move his legs around a bit it's a little bit more hindered because he's got such large appendages um, and like the same here makes it a little bit awkward like between the fact that he's not really a guy that can move his head and the fact that you have you know 
like these large arms that can't move quite as normally. It makes some poses a little bit more difficult, but still it's, it's an overall pretty nice figure with just a few small little design flaws, but nothing really major. It's nothing, it's definitely, I guess Animo is not major, but I was going to say it's nothing like Animo's weirdness of having this, uh, like, I have, I have a hands to hold something that I never have. I, I don't know. That was just, that sentence got away from me. But let me get him to stand. Or not. We could not get him to stand. It, it could be either or, guys. There we go. Let's put you back here. You're like the Red Ranger of this lineup here. All right, here we have Stinkfly, who is easily uh, the most drastic redesign of the aliens of the original 10 that made it into the, the new 10. And I don't mind his design. It's kind of like if... If Stinkfly and Big Chill and something new were made together and they wanted like a more humanoid version, then I didn't really mind it. And he's actually one of my more favorite alien transformations in the new series because Greg Sipes voices him and I find him to be really entertaining. And part of me always think they could have just made him a new alien, but also he would have kind of been saying me to Stinkfly, but I don't know. The point is I actually don't mind the design. I actually kind of dig it. Um, but the figure is very okay. I think they got the colors right and like the sculpting right and like the wings are kind of nice with like the clear part and they, they can come off and th this wing part can actually detach from this main base part which makes him kind of loose uh, which is kind of annoying and you can take the whole part off too because he comes with these little suction cup things that you can put on windows and mirrors and stuff and like these little, you know, they look like goop things and you can have him um, hanging on it. As you saw there was a little hook on the back so you could have it look like he's flinging through the air or something. And you could probably also have him um, gripping on it with one of his hands because he's got... It would kind of... It would kind of... It probably would fall off more, but you can, could do that. But my main problem with the figure is the head sculpt. I feel like it just doesn't have enough personality. It's just kind of generic, like, eh, pose. Like, it's just kind of boring. Like, I feel like... With something like Wild Vine, I feel like they really got a, a good range of personality for him. This one, they really didn't. He's got pretty good articulation, though. He can move around pretty well. He's moving around so much, the camera's having a hard time focusing on him. The forward motion on his legs is a little weird, but other than that, he's got a pretty solid range of motion. He even got the up-down on his head articulation, which is nice. But yeah, I was a little bit disappointed because I was looking forward to Wild Vine's figure and I was hoping his face would have a little bit more personality. Alright, now here's Upgrade, who's also a little bit more significantly changed, mainly just the shape of him and the fact that he's like a dark purple and purple as opposed to green. And I do kind of dig the new design, but I do kind of miss the original Upgrade design sometimes just because the whole green thing obviously fit in with the Omnitrix and the alien feel they were going for. But it's an overall solid figure, it's much more of those um, like see-through classic figures. I think if I remember right in the original Ben 10 series we did like a regular upgrade that was like solid colors and then we did one like this. We did one like this for everybody actually that was like kind of see-through-y. Um, so th they kind of just went with that right away so obviously you can see through it a bit. Um, but it works for like the vibe he gives off and stuff like that. And as you can see he's got a bit of articulation which lets him do stuff and he can move his hands like that. This looks like it can move. I don't think it can. It wouldn't make much sense since he doesn't really move like that in the show, but if you can it's really difficult to do, but I'm like 99% sure you can't. Um, but yeah, that's that's a thing. But he's got some pretty, like it's not like amazing articulation, but I like the, the little bits he's given to give him personalities when he's posed. But anyway, overall, this was a pretty solid wave for me. I, I enjoyed most of the figures in it. Like I said, I find it to be a little bit more exciting for, for people that have been buying figures for a long time because it's, it's got more new stuff, whereas the last one was a lot of stuff we've already gotten, you know, because a lot of the, the, the new versions of the old aliens are just basically tweaked to the art style, and these are the more significant changes to them. And, you know, some nitpicks aside with articulation and various things, Playmates is doing a really good job with these figures. These are really nice figures um, to, for kids to play with and for display and stuff and they're uh, just as good if not better in some respects than the old Band Bandai Alien collection line. So if you're a fan of any of these guys I can recommend checking them out. They're, they're nice figures. Anyway that's about it. Until next time don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It's Dawson Ryder signing out.